Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, here from Zurich Commodity TV. We are here for the Zurich Invest Night. And uh, it's my real pleasure and honor to talk now to Neil Froman, the CEO of Sibandia Stillwater, Africa's largest gold producer. And it's really a while ago we were talking and a lot of things happened. Neil, good morning. Hello, good morning, Johan. <laughs> Great to have you here. Thanks for the time in your busy schedule to give us an update. Let us dive directly in. 2018 was, yeah, I would call it a tough year for the company. I mean, you managed it, yeah, for sure. And you also faced a lot of strike action. Maybe you want to comment on that a bit. Yes, absolutely. So 2018 18, as you said, was a tough year. Um, we were plagued with a number of safety issues, which of course uh, um, are, are um, very, very um, important to us. Mm -hmm. um, not only that, uh, from a moral point of view, they also have a knock-on effect in terms of production. Mm -hmm. And um, so it was a very disruptive year from a, an operating point of view. And then uh, towards the end of the year, um, we had an, a union go on strike in our gold division. Mm -hmm. um, and that's carried on into this year. So 2018 was a year where we saw our EBITDA um, only at about 8.5 billion rand. Mm -hmm. um, it should have been considerably higher. Yeah. The good news is that we are very well positioned in 2019, uh, mm -hmm. um, despite the strike. Um, it's in our gold division, which has become a very small part of our business. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, that's right. We, we will talk in a second about how you are yeah, growing the business and what, what have you done different. Um, 2018, I just want to touch on that briefly again. Um, South Africa was really in trouble, I would call it, but how is the U.S. going with yes. uh, Stillwater, the company you bought? Yeah, Stillwater is, has really been a, a, a great acquisition. We bought it for uh, just over $2 billion. Mm -hmm. um, today it's worth $6 billion. So we've created $4 billion of uh, shareholder value. Now our challenge is to get that to flow into the share price. Mm -hmm. But coming back to South Africa, um, 2018 also saw a change in, in leadership in, from, uh, from a government point of view. Mm -hmm. um, um, Zuma was displaced by um, President Cyril Ramaphosa, who mm -hmm. is an ethical leader. Mm -hmm. um, um, so that's a good sign. We mm -hmm. also saw the appointment of Gwedi Mantashe as our new mines minister. He, in my opinion, is the best mines minister we've ever had. Super. Um, oh. He's got a lot of experience. Yeah. Um, he understands the, understands the industry. He was a union leader, and uh, he's certainly become a very, uh, mm -hmm. uh, a very balanced uh, mines minister. So that's positive. Mm -hmm. Of course, some of the political issues in South Africa are still a concern. Um, the corruption is being rooted out. Mm -hmm. um, we got an election now in May. And we have to see whether our, our new leader will actually stamp out corruption and put people in jail. Okay, wow. That, that, that's, that's always a good thing, to really uh, clean up the mess. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, but it sounds great with the new mine minister. I think that's a very positive sign because, as you said, he's from a union, so he understands both sides of the table, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm, fantastic. Yeah. So let's come to the big future. First of all, I saw you bought a company and it looks like you are switching into new metals, into new areas, meaning the future of e-mobility, like battery metals, I would call it. So maybe elaborate a bit on that. Yes, that, <coughs> that's exactly right. Um, but let me take a step back. Mm -hmm. um, we started life as a pure gold company. Um, we listed in 2013. Mm -hmm. We grew our gold business, so uh, we, we became an industry-leading dividend payer. Mm -hmm. um, we signaled in 2014 that we wanted to enter the PGM sector. We could mm -hmm. see an opportunity. Um, two years later, we made our first move, and then we made four quick moves, uh, which, which uh, we believe were at exactly the right time in the PGM sector. And today, we're the biggest platinum producer in the world. We're the second biggest palladium producer, we're the biggest rhodium producer, and that is all post Lonman, of course. Mm -hmm. What we are signaling to the market now is we have a very good understanding of the PGM business, um, especially from a demand perspective. One third of uh, our future cars are going to be battery driven. Um, the other two thirds will be a combination of fuel cells and hybrids, and we have no exposure to the, the battery electric side of, uh, of this business. So we, we have made a decision, uh, because we understand the global carpool so well and its future growth, 
Um, we need exposure to battery metals as a mining company, and we've acquired SFA Oxford, who are not only experts in the in the PGM sector, but they've done a lot of work for various companies on the electric powertrain, mm -hmm. and what the future battery metals uh, will probably consist of. Mm -hmm. We need that intellectual knowledge, and uh, probably in about 18 months to, to two years, should we find a value accretive opportunity, mm -hmm. we will start moving into the battery metal sector, the mining business. Mm -hmm. Fantastic, great. And I saw also with that, um, I think you are working very hard on the balance sheet. Uh, you just, uh, I saw, just saw the news, $120 million, uh, you're doing a placement uh, with institutions. So what is the case behind that? Yes, so, <coughs> so as any business, um, you need to be prudent, you need to look ahead. We have platinum wage negotiations coming up. Uh, we do have a, a, a fairly highly leveraged balance sheet. Our net debt to EBITDA is two and a half times. Um, it'll deliver quite quickly uh, this year, down to about one and a half times because mm -hmm. of the very robust palladium price and, mm -hmm. and platinum is also increasing. Um, so as, as, a, as a need to create a bit of flexibility, a bit of balance sheet uh, strength, mm -hmm. um, we, we did a, an equity raise yesterday. We used our general authority and we raised... Uh, um, as you say, $120 million. Um, and I'm very pleased to say that was done uh, at 15 Rand 50, um, which uh, is, 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 I wouldn't say it's an all time high or yeah. 52 week yeah. high, but it's a, week high, yeah. it's a, it's <laughs> a decent, was <laughs> it's a decent, uh, it's a decent yeah. price to do, which yeah. shows the, um, the support investors have um, for the company and the future potential of, of the company. So it's a little mm -hmm. bit about flexibility, mm -hmm. also reducing gearing equity is of course a, a good way to reduce debt. Mm -hmm. um, the rest will come through other instruments and, and EBITDA growth. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So let's assume um, everything goes the fine way. Let's talk about 2019 now. Let's come to the future. And also let's assume gold price is a little bit more rising, meaning you will make more money. Will you reduce your debt situation further out of the cash flow? Or do you think, hmm, maybe we want to grow the business and there are some opportunities in the space. We know the merger mania is moving on yeah, with all those big uh, M&A activities, uh, activities. Could you imagine also to say, no, maybe we buy something more? No, I think we've made a commitment to, to shareholders and investors. Our first uh, focus area is mm -hmm. reducing our debt position. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of that will come through pure EBITDA growth, but we would like to get down to at least below one and a half times um, mm -hmm. before we actually start thinking about returning cash back to shareholders. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we are looking forward to, to paying dividends in the not too distant future. Mm -hmm. uh, we would like a stable position from a debt point of view at about one times. Uh, net debt that to EBITDA. So that's really our primary focus before mm -hmm. we buy any more assets. Super, perfect. Can you give us an, a, a little bit of a comment on uh, Platinum Palladium? We had a lot of viewers asking us, what does, yeah, like one of the largest producers in the world, actually, we are, I think combined you are then the number two in the world after Norris Nickel, right? Correct, on um, Palladium, so yes. So what do you think on the markets itself? Yeah. Especially so, with the changing world, diesel, combustion engine, you know, yeah. all that stuff. No, very good question. Um, um, the fundamentals for palladium have not changed since we made our entry into uh, Stillwater. Um, those fundamentals, we can see, you know, uh, a consistent deficit out to until about 2025, perhaps even 2030. The only way that deficit is going to be uh, filled is, is through substitution by platinum. So mm -hmm. the point is this, um, the palladium price will remain strong. In fact, I'm more concerned about a, sh a real shortage of palladium than a, than a price bubble. I think we've had a, a, a correction, with it, which is healthy. Mm -hmm. So I think you'll see palladium continuing to ratchet up. Um, um, but what will happen is that as, um, as the price difference between platinum and palladium gets bigger, um, end users will look towards using platinum instead of palladium. Mm -hmm. um, we are assisting end users by doing some of that research because it's healthy for platinum to create mm -hmm. further demand and in fact to stop a shortage of palladium to make sure that uh, car manufacturers will always have a solution mm -hmm. uh, for their catalytic converters. So, so, so I think you'll see palladium, palladium remaining robust mm -hmm. and you'll start to see platinum moving up um, mm -hmm. 
And, and of course, because we have a 50-50 platinum palladium exposure, that's good for us. Yeah, it would have a double positive effect on absolutely. you. Absolutely. <laughs> and we also think about gold moving up, right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. We, you know, the fact that we've made such <coughs> large entries into, into PGMs does not move, mm -hmm. mean we're moving out of gold. Mm -hmm. We still like gold. Um, we think it's become a bit of a fashion with M&A. Mm -hmm. um, we think that's the wrong time to create value for shareholders. Mm -hmm. We'll watch that gold space carefully. But in the future, we'd like to grow our gold business. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So let's come to the last question. Um, I heard dividends not too distant far future. This is what I love to hear, of course. And like we mentioned, a lot of big of the pension funds also because they need the cash inflows uh, for to, to pay their, their, their pensions to, to their um, um, insurance members. But uh, how do you see 2019? Maybe what is, might be a, the biggest challenge for you and what do you think you can achieve production-wise? Is it a little bit better than 2018? And I could imagine the margin should be better, right? Yeah, absolutely. Look, uh, <coughs> it, it, it should be a much better year. Um, mm -hmm. we, we have not given any guidance on our gold, but our PGM mm -hmm. business uh, should remain uh, robust. Mm -hmm. We see the potential to double, double our EBITDA from last year, mm -hmm. um, and that includes uh, Lonman. Um, mm -hmm. um, so, so, so that's a positive outlook. Um, mm -hmm. That increasing in double or that doubling in in potential EBITDA mm -hmm. will go a long way to reducing our net debt to EBITDA, mm -hmm. and um, and of course dividends are probably the best measure of how commercially sound a company is. Yeah. And uh, we've made that commitment to get back to paying industry-leading dividends. Mm -hmm. We will just do it when it's responsible. Our, our dividend policy hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. um, we need to deleverage first, though, and, and I'm looking forward to that happening by the end of mm -hmm. the year. But, but what would be a minimum yield for you to pay, let's say, stock price from today? Yeah, uh, look, we, we our dividend policy says we'll pay 35% um, of normalized earnings mm -hmm. um, that in the past has given us an average dividend yield of about five percent which in the gold sector was industry leading um, mm -hmm. we look forward Definitely. to getting back to that super I love to hear that so biggest challenge in 2019 well I think the biggest challenge is getting our EBITDA back to levels that uh, I think uh, the our, our shareholders are used to mm -hmm. uh, what is is appropriate for the company in terms of uh, the new acquisitions. Mm -hmm. um, that has to be our focus area. And of course, doing that safely. Mm -hmm. um, we can't afford any further safety incidents. Glad to hear that. Neil, thank you very much. All the best for that. And uh, yeah, we look forward to some good news, of course. Let's keep fingers crossed for higher prices in the metals and uh, yeah, get the dividend back on track. <laughs> Thank you, Jochen. I'll Thank take you your advice. Much. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, ladies and gentlemen, it was Neil Froman, the CEO for Sibanye, Stillwater, second largest platinum palladium producer in the world and uh, also largest gold producer out of Africa. And you heard it, the company had a very tough 2018, but the management was really able and capable to solve all the problems. They are back on track, of course. Numbers were yeah, looking not so good for 2018, but as he said, he wants to double the EBITDA 2019 at least. So that's a very good sign also the problems in South Africa, what we hear here in the press. It looks like with the new mine minister, there are a lot of yeah, issues from the table and I could imagine also with the unions after they, this has calmed down now, uh, the things should go much, much better. But also business-wise, they are going into yeah, other metals. I call it strategic future metals, I would say. And this is the right time for the business to grow on the one hand, on the other hand, to diversify. So I think that Neil and the team is doing the right things and we look forward very soon to some new dividends because as you know we like dividends a lot so check out the company thanks for watching us bye bye from zurich